So, people who do know me know that I'm obsessed with drawing dots. I draw lots of dots. So here's a picture of some dots. How many dots are there? 25? How do you get 25? Should you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? Come on. <laughs> um, is, it, is it really 25? Do most people just go 5 times 5? Yeah, that's a good efficient way of doing it. Okay, so that might be a picture of 25 dots. It's not. It's actually a picture of this. It's actually the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. That's evil. Is it easy? I see some people see it because people are doing weird things. People are doing this at me. Yeah. It's evil, not easy. Oh, it's evil, not easy. Is it evil no, and easy? Yes, both. Yes. 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 The interception. So, so what is it? What are people doing to see this? Oh, yes. <laughs> Diagonals? <laughs> so you're saying that's one dot, two dots, three, four, und fünf, vier, drei, zwei, und eins. Yeah? Okay, I don't really speak German. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Is that the sum 1 to 5 and back down again? This is very Greek. This is very ancient Greek. Greeks love playing with the geometry of figures and just getting cool stuff out of it. In fact, what I'm doing is so classical that you may have seen this before, but if I went all the way up to 10 and then back down again, what picture would go with that first? That's, let me just ask that. Would that be a 10 by 10 array of dots? The diagonals of? So what's the answer going to be then, without doing the arithmetic? 100. 100. So what if I went all the way up to 1,000 and back down again? <coughs> quick, quick, you've got half a second to answer. What's the answer? Add up all the numbers up to 1,000 and back down again. 10 to the 6. 10 to the 6. A million. A million. No, 10 to the 6. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is grand. In fact, if I want to be sort of, in fact, this is how I teach algebra to kids, but I'm not actually doing it. Because it's very natural to ask, what if I just went up to some number n and then back down again? n squared? So I, I really can't stand these algebra books that have a whole chapter devoted, what is a variable? <laughs> if you give it names, it becomes this mysterious object of, of fear. Just do it. It's very natural to call it n, but I use the n for number. But this is grand. Add up all the numbers from 1 up to n and back down again, and we have the fabulous formula n squared. All right. Let me ask this. What if I only want the numbers from 1 to 5? Because it is a bit weird going up then down again. And you told me this sum was 25. All of it. What if I just wanted some numbers from 1 to 5? How would I, can I see what that has to be without doing it? I mean, I know the answer is going to be what, 15? Take off 5 and take half. Take off 5 and take half? Add 5. Add 5, add five and then? Take half. I'll do whatever you like. What would you like me to do? Add 5 or subtract 5? Add 5. Add 5. So if I add 5 to both sides, I assume, I'll put another 5 here. Then you get 2 of them. Oh, 2 of them. So, 25 plus 5 is twice my answer? Ah, so I guess that means 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is actually 25 plus 5 all divided by 2, which I believe is 15. Yay or nay? What do I want? Is that what I want? Oh, that is what you want. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. I want to add up all the numbers from 1 up to 1,000 and leave it at that, not bother coming down again. Okay, add a thousand to both sides. So there's a thousand squared plus a thousand. So I need double what I want, half of that. In fact, if I want to be very algebraic, because I don't like writing actual numbers, what's the sum of one to n? Yeah, add an n to both sides. n squared plus n, it's double what I wanted. And you've got the famous formula. I, I believe that's a famous formula. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now, I'd like you to memorize that formula and do these 50 questions tonight for homework and then just push us. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a snide attitude about education.
Um, well, that's pretty powerful. So what's the sum of all the numbers from one up to a million? Well, who wants to actually ten, ten, work? You say million squared plus a million? No, no, ten. Half of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, perfect. Good answer. Well, what is a million squared? Ten to the twelve. A million, million. Okay. Hans, are you English or are you American? Yeah, here's an issue. Here's an issue. I can't resist. What do you call that in the US? Thousand. What do you call this in the US? Million. What do you call the first one in the UK? I'm not British, by the way, Mr. Rowe. But what do you call it in the UK? Disclaimer. Thousand. What do you call this in the UK? I know you're nervous. Million. <laughs> what do you call this in the US? Billion. 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 What do you call that in the UK? <laughs> Thousand million. <laughs> what do you call this guy in the US? Trillion. So you guys go thousand million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, da da da. But in the UK, it's thousand million, thousand million, billion, billion thousand billion, oh. trillion. I would much rather be a billionaire in England for two reasons. Two reasons. What are the two reasons? Exchange rate way better. Plus, I'm up by a factor of a thousand. Anyway, that, I digress. I digress. Oh, so that's all grand. Um, actually, let's be very Greek. Let me go back to what I first did here. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. When I did, whoops, all the way up and down again, that was the whole square. What's the picture that goes with just 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5? It's basically half the sum, isn't it? Actually, it's a bit more than half the sum. So it should be half that square I'm hearing. I've heard people say the word triangle. Is it a triangle? There's the one, there's the two, there's the three, there's the four, there's the five. So I'm only looking at this part of the picture. This is getting very messy now, sorry. Yeah. People call that a triangle number. In fact, the Greeks would love to draw things like this. I can just get that picture very messy. They make it look more triangly. But do you see one plus two plus three plus four plus five in that picture? That was called the fifth triangle number. Grand. Lots of jolly fun. In fact, we found a formula for the nth triangle number. It's gone from the board, but I did ask you to memorize it because memorizing is important. <laughs> what was the formula again? Okay, n squared plus n divided by 2. All right. He said the trouble is I've been lying for the last 10 minutes. My original picture was not that sum. I'm sorry. All this is a lie. This is actually a picture of this. <laughs> yep. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah. Right. Okay. One plus three plus five plus seven plus nine. would often just do swaggy things. They'll go one dot, three dots, five dots, seven dots, and nine dots. Which is really equivalent to just going one plus three is four, plus five is nine, and seven is sixteen, plus nine is twenty-five. But what's the sort of the nice, beautiful way to see this? That's why I get to the video about Maddox. I don't want to say random, I'm saying it feels powerfully gorgeous. Three dimensions. Three dimensions. I mean follow the elves. Is that what you mean by L? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry, I'm starting to the wrong place. It's not going to work for I said. Oh, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one dot, that's three dots. Is that five dots? Is that seven dots? Nine dots? By the way, what's the I mean, I don't know why I'm saying this, but what's the official math name for an L shape? Yeah, it begins with a G. Have you seen that word? How to impress your friends at Scrabble? No. 
It's actually the name of the L-shaped piece in the middle of a sundial. That's where it actually comes from. Anyhow, so there it is. The sum of the first five odd numbers must be a five by five square. What's the sum of the first ten odd numbers then? Ten by ten, hundred? What's the sum of the first million odd numbers? Ten by twelve. Would that be a million squared? Now, here's the hard question. What is the millionth odd number? Ooh. One million. What is the millionth odd number? One million. Is it one two million? Million, nine, 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 <laughs> it's one of those type of questions. It works out well, because my, my students always do it wrong, so they always think they have one less homework assignment. Excellent. All right. That was just the warm-up. I went pretty fast. This is very classical stuff. People know me have probably seen this a thousand times. What you haven't seen, what I really want to talk about, is this guy. What have I drawn? Multiplication table. In fact, I've done the actual numbers there, just the order multiplication, then I've said what they are. This one's really three times three, that nine. This one's really one times five, that five. Great. So when I was in, in primary school, back in Australia, uh, we had to memorize our multiplication tables up to the 12 times. Is it 12 times in this country? Is it yeah. not 10 times? 10? Yeah. Probably varies. Okay, 10 or 12. Um, I was really jealous of Peter Sylvester. He could memorize his tables up to 14 times tables. That was a big deal back in grade. <laughs> what grade is this? I don't know what grade this is. Three, four? Yeah, I was impressed with Peter. He could do his 14 times tables. Um, just as an aside, if we're going to make kids memorize stuff, do you know you don't actually have to memorize beyond the five times table? For example, what if I want to do something like 7 times 8? Let me teach you a handy trick. A closed fist is worth 5. To make it 7, add one more digit number digit. That's now 7. This closed fist is worth 5. To make it 8, add 3 more digits. So you got my stuff? This is going to be 7. This is going to be 8. Each finger up is worth 10. So I've got 10 fingers in all. So I currently have 5 fingers up. That's 50. And all you should do is multiply the fingers down. What's, there's three down, there's two down. What's three times two? Six. I claim that seven times eight is 56. Oh. <laughs> so how about I Want to do another one? Yeah. Nine times eight. <laughs> <laughs> What's nine? Four. 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 What's eight? Yeah. All right, each finger up is worth 10. Yeah. 70. Half plus actually counting, yeah. And you multiply the fingers down. One down, two down. What's one times two? So I do need to go to that table. One times two is two? Seven, two. Okay. I will use my fingers and toes to go beyond the ten times tables. But before I do, I want to make sure we understand just the fingers. What about these? Sorry? Like nine times four. Nine times four, so you have to anti raise the finger on the hand. <laughs> okay, there's problems. I get I'm with it. I'm with it. Does it work in extreme? What's ten times ten? Yeah. And zero to plus zero times zero? What's the other extreme? Five times five would be the I mean in this case, yeah. Is it working? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All you think that's worth ten? Nothing. More five fingers down. You actually have to know five times five is twenty-five. All right. So this is actually a great question. Why on earth is that working? Yeah. Or is it just coincidence that I was pulling up ones that seem nice? And 
my algebra 2 kids either completely love me or completely hate me, because this is the sort of thing that actually motivates good algebra questions. And in fact, let's, let's go beyond 10 times 10, just, just make this worse. Let's do 17 times 18. Okay, and I'm going to use fingers and toes. I've got 10 digits on this side of my body. Everything down is worth 10. To make it 17, I'm going to put up five toes, which you can't see, and another two fingers. Seven digits up on this side. 18. Everything down is worth 10. To make it 18, put five toes up, three things up. So 18 up. Now, since I'm using all 20 digits, everything up is now worth 20. So I've got 7 up on this side and 8 up on this side. So each is worth 20 makes <coughs> 15, 20s. And you multiply what's down. 3 down on this side, 2 down on this side, what's 3 times 2? 306 then. Is 17 times 18 306? <laughs> Oh, I think it's good to have this in my A for us, yeah. Um, is it? I don't know. Anyone can calculate it, let's do it that way. Of course it is. Fingers and toes are telling me it is. Want to do another one? 19 times 16. Think your way through it. stuff in our way. I, I don't normally be, hit you with all sorts of things, but this is actually a great puzzle unto itself. Why on earth is this working? And then my brain is like this. I don't know that Martians don't have five fingers in each hand. They have six fingers in each hand. <laughs> so what on earth are Martians going to say about this and do? So I'm going to be cruel. If you want to figure out this finger trick, feel free. It's a, you know, <laughs> sort of figure out how to write down an equation to describe what we're doing, and then some little algebra. Or you just go to, just look at my stuff, jamestantum.com, and if you look on that website and just hunt for a finger trick, I reveal everything. It's the cheating way to do it. But what I really want to do is play with this multiplication table. Let's do it in a very Greek way. We did two things with the dots. We added up diagonally, and we added up in moments. What if I add these numbers up? Diagonally, there's, there's the 1, there's 2 plus 2, what's 2 plus 2? 4. 3 plus 4 plus 3. 4 plus 6 plus 6 plus 4. <coughs> 5 plus 8 plus 9 plus 8 plus 5. <laughs> 35. I guess I'm going to stop there because technically my table keeps going. I'm missing those numbers, but I could keep going. So here's my first question. What are these numbers? 1, 4, 10, 20, 35, that would keep going if I had more space on my table. What are they? is very scrawlily written. <clears throat> 1, 4, 10, 20, 30. In fact, do you have a prediction of what the next number is going to be without actually working it out?
We predict 56? 56. Which I don't know if it is 56 or not. Actually 56, I can tell you, because I don't have it in my head. Maybe not, okay. I don't know. Yeah, it is 56, turns out to be the next number. All right, all right, all right. Mystery number one. That was the diagonals. Let's do the G word. What's the G word again? Moments. I'll do them in rune. There's one. What, are, what does that gnomon add up to? Eight. What does this gnomon add up to? Twenty-seven. My handwriting truly is atrocious. The next gnomon. Is it sixty-four? That's what I'm hearing. Is that actually sixty-four? I'm lazy. I see a 20, and a 20, and a 20, and a 4, 64, okay. Do you know what? I, actually, that's what I really wish I could ultimately teach kids in high school. Just, just be clever. Save yourself work. How to be lazy. How do I be lazy with that moment? Maybe 20? I mean, I don't know. It's your style. It's your moment. 20, 20. That's 50 there. And 50. 75? No. Okay. So I guess my second mystery is what are these green numbers? Cubes. Cubes. Okay, we feel like we can recognize them. One cube, two cube, three cube, four cube, five cube. So you predict for the next one. Six cubed, and then you probably check yourself to see if you're on track. Alright, so now we have two mysteries. One I feel I've got more of a handle on. Green ones seem to be cube numbers. Red ones seem to be some numbers. <laughs> Could we... <clears throat> I guess the red is going to be meteor, because we have to, first of all, figure out what those numbers mean, and then explain why it's true. We know what these ones seem to mean. Is there any reason to believe why those moments should be cubes? I'd love to go. Yeah? Okay, that was the yes-no question I asked. Yes, there is a reason to believe they should be cube numbers. Well done. Is it the previous one? No way. Because we're adding up um, the numbers in like the fifth gnomon, we're adding up the numbers in multiplying by five. Alright, so they should actually look at this fifth gnomon then. So you said oh. the fifth one. So that should be five cubed. So somehow I should see, do it this way. It's five squared times five, of course. Is it five squared times five? Because it's, it's, uh, you can factor out the 5 from all of that. Alright, so I'm going, alright, okay. that, what's 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 that, is that specific to the five? Or is that going to work for the nth moment as well, just in general? Oh, gosh, you guys got that one. That's great. Well done. I support these red ones. Right. Oh, right. Is that the triangle? Is that the triangle numbers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what are the triangle numbers again? Um, uh, I'm going to do this. No, I'm going to do this. So here are the triangle numbers. Oops, not a very good triangle, sorry. That was 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5, I remember it was um, 15, you said. 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus, uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is uh, 6, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10, 15. So you're telling me these red numbers are related to those green triangle numbers? 1 is 1, 4 is 1 plus 3. Uh, 10 is 1 plus 3 plus 6, is that right? Is that, is that hearing you say it? 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 10 is Sansi? Yeah? Okay. Pyramid numbers. Py well, pyramid numbers. It's someone said 3D earlier on. Maybe they really want to go 3D. Is it 3D? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you think this is 3D? 
day. You know, we all must think terribly alike because this is what I had to do before I came here. <laughs> I've just, just, just revealed a very interesting math circle issue if you want to do one of these things. You obviously, I had a feel of where we're going to go with this class. And you don't know how many transparencies I have. Maybe I have a whole like branch and possible sets, depending on, on where we go. Or maybe I just I kind of knew we'd end up here, and I just, that's the only transparency I made for this section. <laughs> and I just somehow totally made us guide our way that way there. I don't know. What did I do? Yeah, meta questions don't count. Is that really is that really a sum of triangle numbers? Let's just be very clear. Do we see it? <laughs> you see. One little tiny lonely triangle number there. One. One plus two makes three. One plus two plus three makes the six there. And so on. Oops. That's there. So I think I've done the fifth one, right? Well, uh, one, two, three, four, five layers. All right. So apparently, the numbers, which were 1, uh, 4, 10, 20, 20 uh, 35, 56, seem to be these pyramid numbers. Um, I guess people tend to call them tetrahedral numbers. If you're especially in Greek, what does tetra mean? 4. So where's fourness in this? Four faces. It's a four-sided pyramid. Um, okay, so a lot of mathematicians would call these the tetrahedral numbers. The Greeks would call them tetrahedral numbers. We can call them pyramid numbers. I'm not sure I don't care what we call them. All right. So the question is, why on earth would the diagonals of a multiplication table correspond to three-dimensional stacking of triangles to make tetrahedrons? <coughs> 1, 4, 10, 20, 35. Could you write out the products? I can write out the products. My terrible board technique. One, four, ten, twenty, thirty-five, and somehow it's got to do with a tetrahedron. Is it all fitting? Of course not. Slide the one that you wrote on up. In fact, I think this tetrahedron is the fifth one, so apparently that whole figure has thirty-five dots in it. But there's no way to naturally see, of course it has to be thirty-five dots. more than half the nomens, like the triangle numbers are slightly more than half the squares. So this whole picture is slightly more than half of something? When the nomens gave you a cube, yep. what we have is a cube cut along the diagonal, including that diagonal. That's where the slightly more than half comes from. Oh, so you're saying then, ah, if I took another one of these guys and sort of stuck it on that side, this represents basically half a cube. In which case, and that face there is like double counter, like we had the double diagonal. All right, true. Is it really true if I took two tetrahedrons like this and stuck them together like that, would be a cube? If you smoosh it. If it's, okay, smooshed, smooshed up cube? How many faces would our object have? And how many faces does a cube have? Six. <coughs> so. These numbers are slightly more than half the matching cube number. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. You can't see at the front, but lots of people like giving me frowny things at the front here. 
don't know if that's. I don't know if that frowns like they vehemently disagree with you, or maybe that frowns like I can't see it yet and I'm just frustrated with myself. Is it true or is it not true? <laughs> It, it, it obviously has to be less than the cube, less than half the cube, in fact. If, in fact, I think the trouble is it has to be less than half the cube by a triangle number of stuff, and that's kind of hard to... It keeps changing how much less by it is, I, I guess, depending on the size. Oh, yeah? Slice it. What do you mean we slice it this way? Oh, I, okay, okay, so, oh, 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 oh. You really want to go for the five ones. And I'm hearing you said the bottom edge. Here's five ones. Uh, four twos or two fours, I guess that's which way we're reading this. I'm sorry, you have one five. Now I want to see two fours. This is going to be a mess now. Behind the five and above it. This is going to be a really terrible mess picture. Is that a four by two rectangle? <coughs> In some sense, this is a five by one rectangle. Is that a three by three rectangle? Yeah. Middle school teachers might yell at me right now. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Hard to draw. Oh, hard to draw. Three. One, two, three, is it? Yeah. And uh, one, two, three. Or something. Beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> Perfect. Is that three by three if I'm kind of doing it? And then about four by two or two by four, I'm lost which way we're we going. Seeing it? Two and then sort of come down. It's hard to picture my drawing, I'm being a little bit bad with it. And what about five by one? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I believe this diagonal really is stacking together slices that end up making the fifth tetrahedral number. Purely visual proof. Do you think it works in general? I mean, that was specifically five. Do you think we're onto something that works in general, or is this just, we lucked out this particular size we have? Yeah? Then I'm with you. These numbers are the tetrahedral numbers. They come from stacking triangles. That's why you, I think you said to me, you notice the difference is like up three, up six, up ten, like sums of triangle numbers. It's all fitting together. I can see sums of triangle numbers. And if I look at the clever way of slicing, I can see products like this. Obviously the diagonals of multiplication table. Brilliant. Very nice. Very Greek. So then here's my next question. After your success of brilliance, you get yet another question. What's the sum? of all the numbers in that table. And you do it all by hand and actually add them up? Or is there, is there cleverness to be had? sum of all the numbers in that table and add up all the L's, is that right? So the answer must be, the each side is that's 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed plus 4 cubed plus 5 cubed. Okay, that's the answer, whatever that is. 
factor out all the... Or you can also do something else, apparently. What can we also do? Uh, you factor something out. Then you get 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 to... Oh, if you go by rows, we know 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. That was, um, that formula I think was 5 squared plus 5 over 2, Tommy. Mm -hmm. So it should be the square. And, and then you factor 2 out of that, and you've got the same thing as 2. And 2 times and so 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5, is that right? So I'm going a little faster because I realize time is now not our friend. Is this 3 times the same thing? What's this guy? Five times one plus two plus two plus what was that? All right, that looks charming on the right. Well, I guess that's one times. So I'm also just be symmetrical. Yeah, but it, it, you can also see it as one plus two plus three plus four plus five squared. Because when you square it, oh, you all see, of those products. pull out this common horrible factor. <laughs> we need a different color. We need black. We're now serious. It's 5 squared plus 5 over 2 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 yeah. plus 5. Which is, which is what? Five. Five. So this is 5 squared plus 5 over 2 all squared. Oh my goodness. <coughs> In fact, if you had to hazard to guess, 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed all the way up to n cubed, That's the sum of the n cubes. Here we did the sum of the first five cubes, and we got that beast. N squared. N squared plus n over two. One of these horrible factors. Squared. Now, since I am a high school teacher, this does come up in a few places in the high school curriculum. Oh, yeah? Well, I was just saying, it's pretty much what you did, but another way to see it is, is that if you write down 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and square that, then what you're getting is all products of one of those numbers by another one of those numbers, which I'm is what's in the, the table. Way. Whatever floats your boat, it's good. All good <laughs> math is good. Brilliant. This comes in two places. Often some curriculums will have kids teach induction. They make them prove formulas like this by deduction. And it's just the most dry, joyless way. It doesn't explain where these formulas come from. Who thinks of these things in the first place? This is just beautiful. In a basic calculus class, they'll often give formulas like this because you want to do your basic area under y equals x cubed or something and do little rectangles. You're stuck with summations of things like that. It's, it's, it's sad to me that this is kind of the joyous way to sort of play with this idea and look what's just magically appeared. I had no intent. Well, I'm dead, but I'm pretending I had no intent to get there, and there it happened. But it does leave you with a second mystery, though. Today, we've seen this. And we've now just seen this. So what's the sort of mystery to be had? This seems to be the compelling question to me right now. And clearly, it's got to be something between that answer and that answer. So I'm proposing this. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, uh. <laughs> well, clearly, it's halfway between. <clears throat> well, I'm afraid that's it for the timing, what we can do today. Oh, wait, you have to do that as homework? Oh, this is the quiz. This is the quiz, yes. <laughs> we got a form for that guy. And be clever. If you really have to do, well, you can't even do induction. You don't even know what the formula is. So that's the trouble with induction. That's the grungy way of getting things. I guess you just, um, on your own, be very Greek. Draw some pictures. By the way, I'm going to be obnoxious. We've got all the tools, what we've seen today, to make it happen. Do things with tetrahedrons some more. Maybe slice up yet a different way. Maybe things will sort of gel, play. And that's, that's the nature of math circle, play. It doesn't matter to be wrong, you're meant to fumble, you're meant to flail, you're meant to feel like you know nothing. So welcome to the real world. You know? <laughs> and every now and then those little epiphanies will happen after the weeks of struggling. And it's those, those little epiphanies are so joyous they propel you for more, even though it was weeks of suffering. And we often don't teach kids the patience to suffer and the tenacity to push on and just 
go for and just find joys when they happen and follow different tracks. We always feel like we need to get to an answer, we need to get to the answer quickly. That's, that's not fun. This is hard, but it's also fun. This is math world. All right, so thanks so much. Thanks for coming along.